Another 12 months of doing a white crying. And then it'll be what? Another 12 months of doing a white crying. Do you think that, uh, Do you think that Dillian White looked good of a night? I thought he looked terrible. He looked, at the, he looked in as bad shape as what uh, Belize looked. And so he's sitting there, on the, sitting down in front of the Sky Sports cameras, waiting his heavyweight heavy cameras. And he's calling Andy Ruiz to jump on the court. Well, he came in within one stone of the same weight, didn't he? Yeah. And he's saying he's got the best left hook in the business. He has got a good left hook though, Dillian White, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got a right hand though, has he? I don't, uh, I don't think his right hand's as good as his left hook, is it? But Mike Tyson's right hand wasn't as good as his left hook, was it? He, f he always... M Mike Tyson were basically a southpaw fighting as an orthodox. And I think Dillian White is a southpaw fighting as an orthodox because everything's based for his left, isn't it? But, you know, like Andre Ward? Andre Ward is a southpaw that fights at orthodox. Now, I know that from, from people I've spoke to, but... Dillian White, I think he's all his powers to the left, but he has got a good left. You have to admit that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know where Dillian White goes from here now. I mean, what do you think to the situation with Dillian White? Well, I don't know where Dillian White goes from here now. I mean, what do you think to the situation with, with him with Dillian White? What do you think what, what, with this B sample? And, I mean, I, I, I've put a, a line under it all now because he, do you think he's, he's unfortunate? Or do you think there's something happened? Because obviously Thomas Hauser said that there was... You have to have 0% nandrolone in your body, don't you? And he had some percentage of nandrolone in his body, didn't he? So... To be honest, yeah, to be honest I'm not really that bothered. At yeah. the end of the day, I think that he's had a really bad First finding the wall, wasn't there? He wasn't making up anything that wasn't true. The truth was, there was an adverse finding, and therefore, there was a failed test. That is the truth. If he wants to be going after anyone, why shouldn't he be going after Spencer Fearon, who blankly said on camera that he accused falsely Oscar Rivas of failing a test? Now, isn't that ruining someone's reputation by lights? But he didn't say anything about Spencer Fearon, did he? No. Yeah, you're right there, Dale. You're exactly right. Tell it, me which one's more out of order. Well, this is why. This is how me and Spencer Fearon have got beef, haven't we? Obviously, Spencer Fearon emailed me, and uh, he uh, he weren't happy with what I said, and he asked me to take the video down, and uh, and I said no because if I take it down, I've only ever took one down, and. Uh, I had to take that down for uh, for some some of that I'd, some of that I'd said that were were I got the wrong end of the stick, but uh, if I take that, then I've got to take Spen if I take Spencer's down and I take him out at Elmer's, I'd have to take every it up at floodgates, would not it? Do you know what I mean? The only, there's only one person who can get me to take a video down, and that's Dennis or any of his relatives. I w and if he does a favour, I'd take that down, but I'd take it down. Anybody else? No. Or, or if Mick Wales said, oh, Russ, you've got that wrong with Josh, would you take that down? I said, no problem. It'd have to be somebody really close to me for me to take a video down. I, I, don't, I, I don't know Spencer Fearing. I've met him twice. Uh, he's obviously got a problem with what I said, but I've got a problem with what he said about Oscar Rivers. Now, can I come on my channel and say, oh, I've just heard off a sauce... HP sauce. I've just heard off my mate, Daddy's sauce, red sauce, that uh, that Fred Bloggs has, has failed a drug test as well. I mean, 
Who told you that, Spencer? Oh, I can't reveal my sources. So did you make it up then to try and go into bat for Dillian White to make out that you're Team White and Team Matchroom? He's obviously said it for some reason. Um, but it's all good, it gets us all talking about the sport, doesn't it? But it gets us talking about it in a negative way. Now, we all know what goes on behind the scenes, don't we? Right? YouTubers do favours for people. I mean, no disrespect, but the favours that I get asked to do, you would collapse. If, you would collapse if I told you the people that are getting in touch with me or get in touch with people around me and ask me if I will put this out. Ask Porky if he'll put this out. I mean, I, I nearly collapsed at, at Dennis's boxing show a couple of weeks ago when somebody come up to me and, and I'll tell you after this video it weren't and said, oh, is there any chance you, if any chance you're bigging my mate up? I goes, who's your mate on your channel? And he told me and I went, you're having a laugh, aren't you, mate? He goes, yeah, but he's my mate and I'll give you a drink. I says, no, nah, I don't need a drink. To I says, let me have a look at the situation and, I and I'll let you know. I looked at this kid and I thought, yeah, he's shocking. But he were wanting me to put him in mix. Now, it goes on. This kind of thing goes on all the time. Now, I don't, I don't do anybody favours. If I think somebody's a good fighter, they'll get on on merit. Now, people keep saying to me, you're, 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 you're a Yui Fury arse licker and a Peter Fury arse licker. Now... If I'm a Peter Fury arse licker, why is Peter Fury in helmets? And let me tell you, he's not happy about it. So, well, if I were an arse licker, I will not put Peter Fury in helmets. Now, don't get me wrong, I, 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 it was a couple of days before I put the video out because I kept humming and ahhing, I told you, didn't I? So I don't know to put, it, put, put this out. Peter Fury had 40 odd votes. I mean, he never, he's never had one vote, ever. For Elmer at a month, you he's had a few, but he's never been in it. He's not, he's not made top 15, but Peter Fury has never ever had one vote for Elmer of the month. And now all of a sudden, he got 40 odd. I mean, that was just on emails. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, people are doing this on purpose to cause trouble. It's like the one when I put Carl Frotch in. And, and I thought, because he's been in five times now, Frotch. And and he, he he don't like being in it, but I just said, look, you've got to, you know what I mean? You've got to go in it. If you voted, you're in, aren't you, Dale? Dennis, Dennis was in it, right? Dennis has been in three times, Elmer's at month, and he's like, what's this Elmer's? So he don't watch videos all the time, unless somebody points it out, or if I've got too personal and somebody's complaining, you go, what have you said now? I said, what are you on about? So then you're in Elmer's at month. He's like, is that good or bad? I goes, well, people think that you're a dickhead. Do you know what I mean? And he's like, ah, it's a bit of PR. Dennis laughs it off. Not everybody laughs it off being in helmets. Do you know what I mean? Johnny Nelson doesn't like being in helmets, but if you're going to behave like an helmet, you're going to be in, aren't you? Look, it's a bit of harmless fun, isn't it? They should take it as a compliment. You know Jake Wood? Jake Wood, I know you're watching. Jake Wood... I'm not keen on him, but do you know what? He were running around saying he made helmets. He made it into helmets top 15. He were running around at an after party going, I'm in helmets. You know, like he'd finally arrived. <laughs> He's juggy his mates always in it though, aren't you Spencer Oliver? Because you are a arse licker. Anyway, moving on from that, where were we? Just going back to the Joshua Ford, I think just to close it off, I think quick analysis of the fight. Go on. I actually thought that apart from Reese um, obviously letting himself down, but I also think that Joshua let himself down. I mean, go back a couple of years, he was absolutely slating Tyson Fury for the way that he fought against Vladimir, uh, just because Joshua had gone in there and knocked him out a year and a half later, saying, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't go in there and going there with a boring negative style and tippy tappy around I, I want to go in there like a lion and rip the belts away from the champion and knock him out in dramatic style well he's all changed his tune now isn't he he got on his bike for 12 rounds against a fat slob journeyman and he's got no confidence in his ability to hold a shot listen every listen. time that he's looking to engage he's backing off out listen this is how I look he's at it right man. He's, a, he's a broken fighter and he's a finished fighter and against the next live opponent that he faces that comes in in half decent shape, he will get put to sleep again. 
This is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. The Porky Report, right? Joshua, all right? Go and look at what Clinton Wood said on my Facebook. If anybody's on Facebook out there, come and join me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook now, right? Because I can say me bit on there. And go look at what Clinton Wood said. Now, Clinton Woods is a man that doesn't waste his time around nonsense. He doesn't suffer fools gladly. But when he were a world champion for over three years, IBF world light heavyweight champion, he, Clinton Woods old belt, Baturbia's got it now, Art of Baturbia. When Clinton Woods were a world champion, he were dedicated, he were a gym rat, he got up every morning, did his seven mile run without fail, hitting same time every morning, running up same hills, he were a gym rat. He never missed a session, he loved to train. But he had a physique like Larry Holmes, Tony Bellew. That don't mean anything. Muscles, you can't put muscles on chins, can you? Kovalev's physique's not like Anthony Yard's, but look what happened. Yard got iced. Point I'm trying to make is Clinton Woods knows what he's on with. And he paid for the fight. And, well, go, what, go look at what Clinton Woods said on Facebook. Go get Clinton Woods a follow. Area level champion, British Commonwealth European and a world champion over three years. Clinton Woods, world champion over three years. Now, how many world champions have we had in this country that have gone over three years? Joe Calzaghe, uh, Anthony Joshua, I think it was just over three years, wasn't it? So you've got two, two were Joshua three years, wasn't it? About three years, wasn't it? Yeah, Charlie Martin. When, yeah, so Joshua, Charlie, uh, Joshua, Clinton Woods, Joe Calzaghe. I don't think Frotch had his belt for over three years. Uh, although he, 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 he regained it, didn't he, both times he lost it in his next fight. But Chris Eubank, uh, there's not many that have been a world champion for over a three year. Hey. Eh? Frank Bruno lasted six months. So, Clinton Woods, if he says it's crap, it's crap. He'll tell you straight now. Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis, yeah, but he got knocked out in between both times, didn't he? But he got knocked out a couple of times, didn't he? I think he had a draw against Holyfield in his first right? Yeah, but don't forget, Clinton Woods, right? He fought Roy Jones when nobody beat Roy Jones. Do you know what I mean? Roy Jones had not been beat in ring. He got robbed with a bad deal. He knocked somebody out, didn't he? And they disqualified him, but... Roy Jones was the man, wasn't he, when he fought Clinton, right? And Clinton came back from that. Dennis Fruit Towling, and he came back to to fight another day. Now nobody's had, nobody has had a record like Clinton Woods has. And let, let's have it right. We have to give Dennis Dennis Hobson credit for Clinton Woods as career because Clinton weren't a massive ticket seller, were he? I know he used to sell tickets in area. He was big for area, but he weren't like a Joshua megastar, wasn't he? So to be a world champion for that amount of time, I think they had a good team around and they did brilliant. And Dennis don't get his credit for that. And I'm not being a Dennis arse because trust me, we disagree on a lot of things. But, you know, Dennis don't cash his mates in like some people. But Clinton Woods, his opinion to me matters a lot. And if he says, you know, he didn't think it were a good fight, fair enough. Would you watch that fight again, Joshua Ruiz? Would you watch Tyson Vladimir again? No. Right. Would you watch Parker Joshua again? No. Now, there you go. So, the two fights that Joshua has won, but di didn't knock him out in, you won't watch again. Because Joshua, in my opinion, is a coward. He fought like a coward. Is this going to be the new Femi now? Vladimir, upright, fighting on back foot. He's trying to be the next, the next Vladimir, isn't it? You've seen the way he's branding all of his clothing, Anthony Joshua training camp and all that. He's trying to follow the same pattern as what Vladimir did. Another thing as well, right, that people are missing out on, but are missing, all you gimps out there from Gimpville Island that keep emailing me abuse, keep it coming in. Because my sponsors keep saying to me, look at this, look at this, look at this. They think it's good. <laughs> I used to go mad.
I go mad that somebody else deals with your emails now, like, but I'd go mad. But let me tell you this keep it coming in because you all look stupid. Joshua is good for Joshua. AJ Boxing. People keep saying, oh, it's brilliant for British boxing. No, it's good for AJ Boxing. It's brilliant for AJ Boxing. And it's B A. NG and he's got it across there AJ Boxing that's what it's good for they're good at piling up money right Joshua for Alien if he's putting master classes on why don't he fight Wilder or Usek listen Dale right? I'm raging here but let me tell you this and it ain't sour grapes oh I wanted Joshua to win no I didn't want him to win I wanted him to lose Porky you're a bit of, you're a hater you're jealous no, I just wanted another man to beat another man because he's a fraud. We're being frauded. The f people can't see it because they don't understand boxing like we understand it. The other deal, they're not hardcore. You're casuals. Ah! Ah! Breakdown. I'm having a breakdown. I need cocaine. I need cocaine. I need more of it. Jesus. Don't need any drug. Only drug I need is training at Mick Wales gym. Boom! That's all I need. Going hey, alright, I'm sparring now, aren't I? <laughs> so, my foot. Hey, look, I'll be honest with you, my footwork's terrible. You know what I mean? My footwork is shocking, but. Do you know what I mean? You've got to turn up for your battles, haven't you? So, I've got a good trainer in Mick Whale and Josh and Dempsey Whale that are showing me things that, you know, I didn't know. Do you know what I mean? There's kids in there that are 16 year old that could flog me. That's about that, I'll be honest. Obviously they won't be able to do it if we met in a pub. But as regards boxing, you, it's, we've got rules, haven't it? But yeah, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'll be there tomorrow night, Friday. So, I'll be training at Mick Wales tomorrow night. Steffi, come see me. Mick Wales gym tomorrow night, Friday. We'll all be there, come and see me. We'll have a knock on back. Yeah, I'm all right. It's Mick's got an amateur show Friday, so I'm gonna go train early, and uh, it should be. I think Dennis is gonna be coming to hand some trophies out and that, and plus jo Josh is gonna have belt in it tomorrow, IBO belt. So we're gonna do some filming, I think. So other than that, I'm in a good place. And you know, boxing. Sometimes I obviously, obviously, you know, I've, I, my problems are well documented, aren't they? I've a ten year in jail, ten year heroin addict. Uh, and uh, anything else I could get my hands on that I used to take. Drugs were my best mates for years and it's not good is it but boxing's given me a different perspective now on my eating habits, my sleeping habits, I sleep a lot better and I feel like I can handle situations a bit better, carrying myself a bit better as well so I'm enjoying it and I'm going to go up and see Clinton Woods in a couple of weeks and I'll pick his brains and, and all you can do is just try and learn off people and if I see Chris Smedley I'll pick his brains as well so I'm enjoying it mate I'm enjoying it and should me and Spencer fear and fight on Porky's Corner I'm willing to make a donation to charity from the the monetization money that comes through on it so it, it's all good mate isn't it there's, there's no reason why Spencer can't get on a train come up to Sheffield they can all camera in gym and we'll get at it in Mick Wales gym. I'm there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm not hard to find. You know, it, it, if anybody wants to come and have a knock on back garden, it's, uh, it's two, two Swinton Place, is it? Swinton Road or something, Mexborough. It's in phone book. Come and see me and we'll get at it. So, other than that, I'm alright. I'm happy. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place, but I don't know if Spencer Feenham wants any of that smoke. To be honest, he, he, I mean, he was only a journeyman, one he really, when you look at his record. I shouldn't really have, have any problems with him, should I, Dale? Nah, nah. He has that crouching style, doesn't he? Like a George Grove style, doesn't he? But really, I am pulling my pants, really. When I go to bed at night and put my head on the pillar, I'll, I open my eyes and I see Spencer and I go, Oh no, I have jumped a right clanger now. I've got Spencer Fearon to fight. Boo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> now it's all good fun. I mean, Spencer's making his way in here in boxing. We can't knock him, can we? Listen, he does a lot for charity. And 
and Dennis likes him and Dennis has got a friend who he gets on really well with and Spencer's gets on really well with this guy so you know I have to be respectful don't I but sometimes if you've got a bit of beef with each other you have to put gloves on and get it out of your system don't you and usually everything's all right after that innit the rest of it is just boxing innit it's just bravado innit I mean see, I wish right I'll tell you what I'm gonna do Dale next time I see you I'm going to show you, well you've seen some of them haven't you in my office, some of the emails that I get are, well let me just say this, thank God that we have got prisons and institutions in this country, oh my God there is some scary ass dudes, there's some scary people in England aren't there Dale, and they're all on social media, go on. Never! Never. Spencer, did you hear that? You never beat. Have you got his record up now? Never beat a guy with a winning record who'd had more than five fights. So if I lose to Spencer Fearing, I'm going to look a right mug then, aren't I? <laughs> if he knocks me out, I'm going to look. I'm going to look a dumpling, aren't I? I'm going to look like a little dumpling. I better get training even harder! But I just let them hands go, God, I'm fast! I'm fast! I'm angry! I'm angry! <laughs> now, I'm looking forward to it, actually. I mean, we're looking at March. Uh, going to fight it. What I'm going to do when I get down to 14 stone 4, I'm just going to start making a lot of noise. And uh, and obviously, because I've got Mick Whale behind me now, Mick's not going to want me to let him down, but... It's uh, it's a slow process taking somebody like me and taking two stone two and a half stone off me and getting me in a boxing ring. But you know we're, we're getting there slowly but surely. I'm starting to see little. The main thing I'm starting to see little improvements. But I think the main thing is that I want to do it and that I'm not really frightened. I mean, Steffi Ball's already put it on me, honey, in his gym. He said, "Oh yeah, you said some on social media." that Robbie Barrett will get knocked out against uh, Ritson. I said, yeah, I did say that. Oh, well, there's a few lads in the gym are not happy and you've got to spark Curtis Woodhouse or something. I went, have I? I said, all right, then let me just get stripped off. So I started getting stripped off. Then he went, oh, no, 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 you're all right. Because obviously he's got a license and they don't want... Last thing they want is an headline in the newspaper that says... Man with gastric band murdered in boxing gym by X million million pound sign because what what else uh, first million pound signing for Sheffield United or something murdered by million pound signing former boxer Curtis Woodhouse knocks out Porky Russ from Porky's corner and the death is due to the fact he had a gastric band fitted uh, some years previous Steffi Ball loses license. And then it'll go on to show his Steffi Ball saying, Oh, I told him not to fight. It's not to do with me. Not to do with me. I want even there. <laughs> so, obviously, you've got to be careful, aren't you? If you're going to have a knock in your own gym if, if somebody's not got a licence, don't they? Obviously, I haven't got a licence. The board can't stand me. Uh, but, you know, the main thing is I want to do it and I turn up for my battles. I'm not really bothered. Because the worst scenario... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to say this to all you people out there who have a bit of fear in you, right? When I first went to prison, when I was 16, I was like, oh my God, what have I done here, Borstal? And everybody looked to me like they were just more gamer than what I was. I thought, God, I thought I were game, but look at these here from Liverpool and Manchester. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking to me saying, God, they're talking about they've robbed banks and they've stole cars and that. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, I'm only here for slapping a bus driver. Do you know what I mean? That, uh, but you, you, as humans, you adapt, don't you? You have to. What is called? It's called growing a pair, isn't it? And um, like I said, I want to do it. I'm not frightened. The worst case scenario is this: I get knocked out. But I've been knocked out before. And you know, like I said to you ages ago, about fighters that protect their own. As soon as they've lost one or they've been knocked out, they want to fight everybody. Then, don't they? Well, I were always a bit apprehensive when I were in prison, right? 
I always be careful, you know, you go in TV room, always try and sit with your back to the wall and just keep watching what's happening. Because the first time I ever got knocked out, I got a pole ball sit back at head in TV room, sat at front. I one of them walk straight in and went, bump, we're having this on, and sat right at front. Clump! Pole ball back at head. Now, you learn from your mistakes, don't you? But after that incident, I think, do you know what? I'm not really bothered about, oh, like I said, once you've been knocked out, you, you're disorientated, aren't you? You're like, I remember one, getting knocked out, right? and I said, God, what happened there? Who, who, who am I? And my mate says to me, he told me my name, and it wasn't even my name or something. He says, yeah, your name's Ken, and you're from so-and-so, and you're in for something naughty. And I'm like, oh, God, how long have I got left? And he's like, you've got eight year left, Ken. And I'm thinking, fuck it, you know, and, and, and I didn't know where I were. I've gone back to my cell and I'm thinking, who oh, am I? You know, because I've been hit that hard up back at air. I'm thinking, God, who am I? And, I've, and then obviously I've grabbed, I've gone through all my belongings I and mean, it's all come back to me. I'm reading who I were and I'm like, you lying bastards. I've only got four weeks left. <laughs> I'll never forget. 1998 and I got out on Christmas Eve, 98. But going back all them years, 21 years ago, innit? If you get knocked out, it's like a flash. It's like playing rugby. You get knocked out and you, you, you don't feel anything, do you? Because your body, re doesn't it release adrenaline at the bottom of your spine? And with it, and Frotch says to me, as soon as you get hit, your body releases some at the bottom of your spine. He says, so you don't feel it. Because a lot of it, it's fear, innit? You're like, oh. You know, like other day, Jim, I were on pads where this, this lad took me on pads. And every time I didn't put my hand back up, he kept, he kept hitting me with, with pad. And I thought, you, you little bastard, what are you doing here? And he kept clumping me. Anyway, and the more he did it, that, it made me put my hand up. You know, after I'd thrown a punch, I went straight back into position. So they're doing it to teach me, aren't they? And, and Mick, Josh Wales' dad, was sat down watching all the way through it. I know he would, probably, would have probably been pissing his pants, thinking, look at Porky, every time he drops his hand, he gets clipped. And it's a process, isn't it? And like, it's like uh, Frotch says, it's a mental process, isn't it? For example, he once said to me, Frotch, that the training will take the average man so far, but the rest is up to them and you've got to have a bit of talent. And I believe in that, you know. And this is where I think that Joshua's done well for himself. He were already an athlete, wasn't he? He probably could have turned his hand to anything, couldn't he? I mean, I've heard he's a really good footballer and a good rugby player. He could have probably gone on to do that, couldn't he, Joshua? You know, if he wanted to. But he chose boxing, didn't he? So, because I think once you've been done for dealing drugs or bad assaults, I don't think you football and rugby, I don't think there's much of a chance of doing it like there is with boxing. But, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. But, but getting back to Dillian White, what do you think for him next? I think he fights Povetkin, yeah?